One of the things I see a lot on the forums is people asking questions about how they can get information back from their boat, how their boat can send them certain bits of information such as the battery level is getting low or the bilge pumps activated and get an alert when that actually happens. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how to do that in Node-RED, how to set that up. We're also going to take a look at asking the boat a question. So you can see here, I've got a couple of examples of options so I can turn lights on and off. I can ask the boat where it is um, and I can also ask it some predefined things like battery voltage or bilge events. The boat location one is actually live. So this is getting live data back from the boat and it's mapping it for us, showing us where the boat actually is and if the boat's moving. So you could use that for something like an anchor alarm or just for basic tracking information. So in this video, we're gonna use Node-RED again to build that and we're gonna go through the steps of setting this up and then I'll show you ways in which you can ask your boat a question and get that information back. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need is something called Telegram. That's the application that you can see in the video at the start where the messages are being sent. Telegram is a messaging program um, available on Android, iPhone, uh, PC, Linux and Mac. So multi-platform should be able to, to get a version there that, that suits your application. Once you've done that, the next thing you're going to need to do is actually install the nodes. So this is what the node is actually called. It's the Telegram bot. So how you get to that is you go up in the corner here and you click Manage Palettes. Um, I've already installed it, so that's why it's popping up there. But if you head over to this side and you search for Telegram, you should see that it pops up there. And it's got a really quite a good guide. If you open this up, it's actually got a really good guide on how you set it up. And I followed some of these steps and it also includes a couple of examples. So the example that I showed you around the live tracking is actually listed here below, but for some reason it doesn't do the live bit. You have to keep texting the word update. Just scroll to the bottom. Uh, where is it? So here are the keyboard examples. So bringing up the keyboard um, and this location bit here so I had to do a little bit of work on that, but I'll, I will, we'll come back to that. But as I say, this, this has got some really good examples on how to get going and what you need to do. So that's how you get to the help. So click install. Once it's installed, it should appear on the left hand side. And here it is. So these are the nodes you actually get. You get a receive node, as you can see there, I've got the receive node set up. You get a sender node. Um, you can do events, um, you can do replies, and you can actually control. So the control is more for actually controlling the bot itself. But we'll go on to that in just a second. So what we've got here then, we've got the Telegram receive node, we've got a Telegram send node, and we've got a bit of debug going on. So if we turn these debugs on and I inject that into the conversation, it will then chat to me and it's just said the word hello. So in there, we've got the message, we've got hello, um, and this is the chat ID, so this is the bit that you're going to need next. Okay, so how we get this going is we have to first of all create the bot. Okay, so this, this is the first bit here. This is how you create it. So you can see here, you need to contact the bot father. So if you message the bot father, as you can see on my screen, you press, you type slash start, and then it comes up and you want to create a new bot. So you type slash new bot. And it says, what would you like to call it? So I called mine Allegra. Um, I had to go a, f a few times until I could actually find uh, a name that was suitable. And then I've got my bot's name, svallegra underscore bot. So what happens then is it comes back with a, an API token. Now you must keep this token secure. So this is the token that we're going to put into the configuration here. So if I go back to my configuration and I open this up, and I create, so there's my name, SV Allegra underscore bot, and my token just below. Now, I've obviously hashed that out because otherwise you could send my bot uh, commands and it would respond. So once you've got that set up, put the server name in and, and your username, so you can create yourself a username as part of the sign up process, you're then ready to go. So if you, if you copy this flow, this very simple flow, what it's gonna do is it's gonna receive the message. So the first thing that I sent to Allegra was the word hello. And the reason I sent hello is because I wanted that chat ID there. So that chat ID is something else that I need to put in all of the responses. So if I click on this one, you can see that the chat ID is there as well. 
So again, we're going to need to send the chat ID back to it so that the bot can respond directly to me because it's like a private message. It must respond to me, not anybody else. So you need the chat ID. So the three things that you need to get this up and running are creating a bot and a bot name, receiving a token, and then getting the message ID. And then once you've got the message ID, I can then interact with it and I can send messages both ways. So it's now talking to me, I'm now talking to it. So this bit of the top here is, is basically done. And there's nothing else we really need this little bit for now. It was just to get that, an easy way to get that. There, there are other ways of doing it and the, the, this goes through how to do it. Um, but I found this quite difficult to follow, uh, going to this website and then trying to grab the, the chat ID didn't actually work for me. So instead, I created that little function there where I said hello to, to Allegra and Allegra responded. Um, and then that meant that I'd got the chat ID that I needed. And now I've got the chat ID. That's not going to change. So we can use that for forevermore, basically. So I've just made this slightly simpler than it was before. And I've removed a little bit of stuff from the top because you don't actually need it to get the message ID. So when you actually see this online and you copy this flow, it'll be slightly easier to follow. And I've, and I've given these names. So again, it's a little bit clearer as to what you're sending and receiving if you want to turn these debugs on. So it, it's as it was before, uh, Telegram receiver to, the de to this debug receiver so you can see the message ID. And then in this one, once you've got that message ID, you put the message, your message, chat ID in that message there, click deploy, hit that button and send it through and it will work. So that's just a slight change from what you've just seen, but it works exactly the same. So now let's move on to the next bit. So let's actually start sending some data to it now. So here we've got um, a node that's just going to, when we click it, send a value of one and a message topic of test. So if I send that to my receive node, in here, we're going to have to put our chat ID. So make sure you put your chat ID. But basically what this is doing is it's looking for message payload and giving that the variable message. So that's there at the end. And message topic, giving that a variable topic and topics here. So we're saying the message contains the chat ID. The type is a text message. So that's why that says message. And then the content of the message is path. So that's going to say the word path plus the, then the um, the topic, so what the actual um, path value is, then the word value, and then the message, so what the actual number is. So it should say test one. That's that's all it's going to do. So if I pop that in there, and the message has just come through, it says path test value one. So that's worked. So let's say that we actually want to send some data out. So let's now just send a value out to it. So a constant value, we're going to actually pick um, depth flow transducer, probably not a great one, but, but we are going to pick that. And we're going to use the depth, we're going to get that message every second. So we're going to deploy that. And what it's going to do now, it's going to start sending me depth below the transducer every second, which it's working, it's sending me, but it's probably too fast. So let's say we wanted to receive that every 10 seconds instead. So we'll deploy that. I mean, you could you could receive this every hour um, if you really want to do, but I don't think this is the best way of actually doing this, but but it just proves the point that, the, that it's gonna send it. So if we just wait now, we'll get a message when that comes through when it subscribes to it, and then we should get a message 10 seconds later. So there's the first one and then it'll wait now 10 seconds, and then it'll send it again. And there we go, 7.7 .7 that time. So it went from 8.9 to 7.7. .7. And that's the basics of actually sending a, a message. So it's using this function here, which looks for a message topic and a payload. And in the actual thing, I'm getting path, environment, depth, below transducer, and the value. So I could change that if I wanted to. I could I could say value in meters if I wanted, if it was something specific. So rather than just sending out values all of the time, how about you request the data from the boat? And to do this, we use the command node. So on the left hand side at the bottom here, we have got the command node. And the command that I'm issuing is slash Allegra. So that will then prompt it to do something. 
um, and then in this case it will build me a keyboard. So here's my keyboard and I've got various bits of information in there as, as to what those keyboard headings or those buttons as it were actually are. So I've got lights on and off, I've got boat location, update location, stop location, battery voltage, bilge events. Um, I've got the chat ID again written in here and the message type um, payload type is message so it's a text message again so I have to make that happen so when I type slash Allegra in the chat it builds me the keyboard so I'll just show that in action so in the message I type slash Allegra and I get this and that little bit where it says what would you like to do if you look that is there so you can customize that message um, and then it brings me those prompts, lights, lights off, boat location, update location, stop location, battery voltage, or bilge events. So that's the first bit of this. So then if I scroll down again, now to gain some of that information, I've got to log it somewhere. And the only way I know really how to do that at the moment in Node Red is to use these files. So on the left hand side, just scroll up to it there's a storage so we can write to a file so I've got my subscribe nodes here and in there I've got the various message or the path that I want to subscribe to so I'm subscribing to that and then I'm writing that to a location file and I'm overwriting that one because I, I want to see the last value I, I don't need the history I just want to see the last value but you could use the history option I've done the same with voltage um, and I've done the same with bilge. And I've got an option here to reset the bilge counts, but we'll come on to that in a bit. So if I scroll a little bit further down, this is where it starts to get a little bit messy, but we'll just try and look at this bit first. So again, same telegram receiver, got my same bot all set up, and then I'm going to a switch. And in this switch, I'm looking for those menu items, lights, lights off, boat location, exactly what you saw before. So if I take one of the lights one, um, it then comes across to here and when that button's triggered it's setting the digital switch one payload um, value of one and that's turning those LED lights on and off that you saw in the previous video and that's why that's then getting sent out to this signal case send put so basically if the boat was all connected to the internet all of the time um, and I left everything up and running on arrival I could text the boat and go lights on please and we could arrive with the lights switched on that's quite a nice feature you could do that with the heating for example you could maybe write one that did a heating preheat um, and you push the button and it preheated the boat and also turned the lights on so those cold winter days aren't quite so bad when you actually arrive on the boat i'm going to skip the next bit and go down to the um, voltage and bilge one because that's a little bit easier to follow so there's the voltage and bilge so instead of writing to the file this time i read the file so from the switch, battery voltage, down this wire here to the battery voltage file, and it's just voltage because I want to read the same file. And I use the same function as I did before. So chat ID, and then this time I've put the current battery voltage. So I've just changed the message slightly so it's a little bit easier to read, but it's just basically going to get me the message. And if I just turn my screen recording back on and I text it and say, what's the battery voltage? It comes back. It says the current battery voltage is 9.9. .9. So obviously we've got a problem there because our battery voltage should be 12. But it's just an example of, of what it's doing. Um, and the same happens for the bilge. So if I type Allegra again and I go bilge events, the bilge pump has run four times. So that's not good. Um, but again, same thing, but the, the pre-bit of that message is just the bilge pump has run, and then at the end, times. So we drop the value in, and then we add times on the end. And what you saw there, up here, is just a little button. So on KIP, for example, I can reset the bilge counter. So I just send zero to it. Um, and obviously, if that value hasn't incremented, then um, that will present me with zero but there's always data coming in at the moment so it's always going to be a number higher than zero but we could reset it and then we could look for those triggers again now this one so the location this bit here this is copied from the example with a slight amendment because it just wouldn't update properly so we're setting some variables here for latitude and longitude we're then passing them to the send location um, node 
it stores the message ID, so I think that's the way that it knows that it's updated. That was actually part of the script. But then what was having to happen was I was actually having to text slash update to get an update. But what I've done here is I've added a delay timer and then I've asked it to resend that data to me every 15 seconds. So if we call Allegra again and we say, oh, let me just turn on the thing, otherwise she's not going to be moving. Now, she is currently in Nottingham, so just bear that in mind. So if I do boat location, we should then get the location of where she is. There we go. She's currently moving. She's currently travelling at 70 knots, so we've got a bit of pace on here. Um, and, and she's making her way just past Belper, um, probably out to, to the North Sea somewhere. <laughs> so as you can see, that, that does work, and that then it goes through the delay, and now it's triggered this node. So we have to reset that node, otherwise that node's going to run forever. So as part of the, the abort, basically, command, which is sent from up here, what it's doing is it's going to come back through here and it's going to send a reset to this so that it stops triggering it. Otherwise, it's just going to continue to update it forever. So I'm not going to go into that anymore. That at the bottom is literally a copy and a paste with a couple of additions, including the delay and the reset timer to actually make it work. So you can just copy that as a, as a template straight into your uh, node red and just again edit the details and away it will go so you can see the other data now is, is coming through and it's going into these files and then obviously if we request one of those th this part of the script here is not going to do anything at the moment it's only going to do something if we request it so it's just going to sit there and do nothing i can also show you it bringing the lights on so if i go back into here and i say to allegra um let's put the lights on the lights will come on and if I go back and tell Allegra to turn the lights off, it'll turn the lights off. So all of those different values are all working there um, and it's sending that information. So as I say, that could be, so that could be your lights coming on, your heater coming on, um, preheat, it could be anything, um, all done through the different messages. I'm gonna leave this video here. Um, I've got a couple of other ideas in terms of um, looking for different ranges of values and how we can do that. But I think if I break this up, it might be a little bit easier to follow. So I hope that's been useful. I'll tidy this up a little bit. I'll put it all online. Um, you can download it from the GitHub uh, repository and you can just have a bit of a play with it. Drop me some comments, send me some feedback. I'm learning as I go. There's probably a few things in there that, that don't work all that well. There's probably a couple of coders rocking backwards and forwards. What I've done to some of them functions. Again, I'd appreciate some feedback on that. Um, but yeah, it, it, it does work, it does prompt a message and it's a way of you sending data out of your boat or requesting data from your boat based on predefined values. So I hope that's been useful. We'll see you next time.